to work with fire. When you're my age, I take my young ones out. Smell the smoke. Smell it. That's grass fire. Smell the smoke. That's a house burning. Smell the smoke. That's tires burning. That's a wood fireplace burning. You should be able to smell every single different kind of smoke. The animals teach their young to do that. But if there's no fire, they can't teach them to do that. That's why we have to burn. That's why we have to keep the fires going so that all parts of life understand what it is that we're doing with fire. We the North Fork Mono and most of the other Mono groups have been here for 15,000 years. When the Indian was out on the land, they always burned. So the use of fire comes through your land so that it can take care of, of your resources and give you new ones. Cultural burning is exactly that. So when we burn, we are burning to perfect this resource to supply resources for our culture. Rather it be food, medicine, fiber, sticks, basketry material. Didn't you guys just burn it? It's been a few years we've burned like, I don't know, 50 yards in all directions. And so this was part of uh, like a little plot we had burned here. So these are new shoots right here coming up. It's good. To see this, we'll have the berries to eat. If you eat them red and dry with salt, mmm. In this particular area, this is where we've been burning for the past five, six years. We've applied fire here a couple of times. This is the Mariposa gray leaf, Manzanita. This is a medicine, both food and medicine. The berry could be, once it's fermented, a really good drink for your stomach. One of the things that we've done here is we burned underneath this and pruned this bush up, trimmed it up so that, one, it will have these nice big bunches of berries. And then on the stalk here, the bark is peeling. This bark is used for poison oak. When you're burning, you try to get the wind to go in the direction of the resource that you want to apply smoke to. Smoke helps the leaves and the berries to become a better product. Consequently, there's been new growth. That's all a part of the end result of applying fire and smoke to the resource. We were burning an area that hadn't been burned for well over 100, 120 years. And when we did burn, these bushes that we're standing in the middle of that are basically three foot tall were about five or six feet tall and so thick you could not walk through them. So dry that lichen and the California daughter, which is a parasite, was beginning to crawl all over them and kill them. So it needed fire. This land needed fire. You need to be able to see through the trees. The concept that we are bringing forth when we work out on the land is this open concept. We've got to be able to see through. When the baby is inside of the basket, look through the basket. See the world, see through the basket to the outer world. See through the forest, see through from this world to the next world. Always the ability to see through. 
Fire keeps the ground clean. Fire keeps our environment clean. Fire is to keep the plants healthy, that they keep growing more materials for us to use. It's a win-win it's a situation for the plant and for us. Every plant is affected by fire. We as basket weavers, we are totally dependent upon the land for all of our materials because we can't go down to Michael's and buy all of our basket materials. And we need a full year, full cycle to gather our materials. This plant is struggling, but if it could get burned and uh, burned back, it would have a whole bunch of new, just really straight shoots come out the top. But you can see how long of a piece that we need. One good thing, if we could have a fire, it brings the springs back, the water level comes up. So the springs hold more water. Fire is always about water. Why are these still green? These are beautiful. We haven't seen water for a month. Because they're holding water in their root system. And why does the water still in the river creek down here? Because all these plants are still holding water and letting the water go gently down into the creek. When you open this up, snow, rain is able to get to the root system and then the root system retains water. What we have done here by opening up this forest and this little ecosystem is we've returned the water. Native communities in California in the past have used fire for a whole variety of purposes, including increasing the fruit production of plants, burning plants in order to encourage a certain sort of plant growth. I think a really critical part of the way that it was done here in California is that when they did small burns, what would happen is, is you would get grasslands and berries and other plants that would come back. And typically, studies that have been done suggest that the diversity and the density of the foods that are from those plants really increases in that year or two after a burn. This idea that you have a moderate level of disturbance, that's when you have the highest levels of diversity and richness in an environment. By doing something like here, like the cultural burn, we're hoping and looking forward to obviously, you know, the straighter shoots and everything, but better berry production, you know, uh, the next season. So, you know, we're all kind of curious and excited to see the fruits of our labor, you know, come next season and see where we're at with this. So. Before we burned, when all this was still pretty overgrown and everything, uh, I don't think any of us had noticed that any of this was actually growing here. So after it burned and everything, it was probably just kind of choked out by a big mass of sourberry that was here. Today at the cultural burn site, the community fire crew was able to do a little bit of preparation for a burn in a few months reducing the risk that when we light that burn, the fire will escape very quickly. So usually one of the top priority objectives of a prescribed burn would be to clear out the shrubs and trees that are representing fuel that a wildfire could come in and burn. It usually has a creeping fire where the fire creeps along the ground and under the trees and even some of the shrubs without burning them to a crisp. Fire is really a lot like electricity. Electricity is a dangerous thing. You can get a severe shock from electricity and it can kill people, but it can also be put to wonderful uses and fire when used in a sophisticated manner is very much the same way. Fire can course through the forest like electrons through a wire and energize those circuits that the forest has. It can turn on the meadows and encourage them to bloom at the right time of the year. Fire is a spirit. This land has spirits. And when we're burning, they come alive. And those spirits, they still hear. That's why we do sing to them. That's why we do talk to them. You have to understand fire. You have to respect fire. You can't be afraid of it. If you're afraid of fire, you won't understand fire.
the Spaniards wanted to suppress fire because they saw it as dangerous and did not necessarily understand what purposes people were putting the fire to. They saw it as a careless application of fire by what many of them referred to as, quote, primitive people, unquote. So fire suppression is very much tied up with social and political oppression of Native American people. It might sound like a good thing to have a lot of trees. That's what the Forest Service thought. And they wanted to maximize the number of trees per acre. But what they were doing was changing the landscape, getting lots of little thin trees in between the bigger trees and the wide spacings that had been maintained for thousands of years by indigenous fires. By suppressing fire and keeping people from lighting cultural burns, you built up the fuel over time. And that's what has led to a situation today where the forest is full of trees, but really closely packed and ready for that spark and for a huge wildfire to start at any time. We continue to follow breaking news out of the Santa Clarita area where 200 firefighters are battling a fast-moving brush fire along northbound Highway 14 near Sand Canyon. It's quickly burning currently at 2,500 acres with 0% containment. A devastating blaze tearing through Southern California overnight. Moving fast, tripling in size, and engulfing more than 18,000 acres of land. More than 82,000 residents have evacuated as air tankers work tirelessly to douse the flames. The Blue Cut Fire started Tuesday, just 60 miles east of Los Angeles, closing down a major interstate and roadways as it grew. The governor of California declaring a state of emergency. Fire is going to be on the land whether we like it or not. We can either choose when and where and how we prepare for it and how to deal with it or continue on with fire suppression and hopefully that it don't come back but it eventually will. And the problem is, is it becomes these high intensity super fires that cause nothing but damage. There's no benefit to it. I'm doing some shell sorting the heavy fractions from flotation that we took in our tribal's traditional territory. Finding even some fragments of fire cracked rock, getting a good number of all this for its relevance in our land tending uses in our territory. With cultural burns, you not only are removing those fuel loads that create those super fires, but you're healing the earth. When you wait for those big super fires or those wildfires, they destroy the soil, they bake the soil, they sterilizes it, kills a lot of the fire dependent and non-fire dependent seeds in the seed bank. It uh, gets to a, a level of intensity where people can't stop it or suppress it anymore. Having prescribed burns, cultural burns, is something that we all realize, at least with experience on the land, that is something that needs to be done. I've heard some forests describe this as an ecological disaster on the scale of Hurricane Katrina. Tree mortality is a huge problem in the Sierra right now. There are millions of dead pine trees. Even without thinking about whether there's a hugely elevated fire risk because of these brown and dried needles, it's a different forest from now on than it was you know, a couple years ago or 10 or 20 years ago. Even if you view this as a catastrophe or a disaster, it can also be viewed as an opportunity for the Forest Service to collaborate with tribes like Gold Springs Ranchery of Mono Indians to really talk together and collaborate and design those fires and those burn plans in such a way that you can meet the objectives that a tribe might have for caring for its cultural resources, while at the same time, linking together many, many cultural burns to build a whole area of reduced fire risk because you are reducing the amount of fuel in the area at the same time. So the Forest Service came in about a month and a half ago and conducted this burn and 
did give some notice to the tribe that they were going to conduct the burn to improve the health of the oaks and increase acorn production. Definitely affected the, the trees. It looks like they're greening up and coming back. The future of fire really depends on more collaboration between American Indian tribes and other agencies who have an interest in and a stake in fire and how to use it and how to minimize its destructive risks and maximize its creative potential. If you have a brand new house and nobody lives in it and nobody cares for it, in a matter of a couple of years, it will begin to fall apart. It needs to have somebody living in it. And this land has to have somebody living in it. When you live in the mountains, when that's been your home, you know when your home is dirty. You know when your home needs to be clean. You know when things are not right. And so by not having fire on the land, not only Native Americans, ranchers, people who use the mountains, people who understand the forest, they'll all tell you the same thing. Our forest is trashy. You cannot leave it like that. You have to have fire in order to have rejuvenation. 